Hello friends, welcome to this channel. So, in previous video, we saw Amazon S3 event notification, right? And now, in this video, we will discuss about Amazon Athena. So, without any further ado, let's get start the session. Okay, so let's talk about Amazon Athena. Amazon Athena is a serverless query service to perform analytics against your object stored in Amazon S3. So the idea is that you would use the SQL query language to create these files, but you don't need to load them. They just need to be in S3 and Athena will do the rest. So this file can be formatted in different ways such as like CSV, JSON, ORC, Avro and Parquet. And the Athena is built on the Presto engine if you must know. Now, how does it work? So, users will load data into Amazon S3 and then Amazon Athena will be used to query and analyze the data. Very, very simple. And then if you wanted to, you could have some reporting on top of Athena, such as using Amazon QuickSight. Now, the pricing for Athena is around $5 per terabyte of data scale. And if you use compressed or data store in a columnar fashion, then you are going to have cost savings because there is less scan of the data being made. So the use cases of Athena are multiple, but anytime you see business intelligence, analytics or reporting or to analyze flow logs in VPC or ELB logs or cloud trail logs or platform logs, all this kind of logs in AWS. Then Athena is going to be really, really good option. So from an exam perspective, whenever you see serverless analyze data in S3, use SQL, then think Amazon Athena. That's it for this theory part. Now let's go to Amazon management console and see how it's work. Okay, so as you can see, this is my Amazon management console. And now let's use the Athena service to query our data in Amazon S3 using the SQL query language. So we are getting into Athena. And as you can see, this is the new editor. And so before you run your first query, you need to set up a query result location in Amazon S3. So let's click on view setting and then manage. And then here we need to specify a location of query result. So what I have to do is to go into my Amazon S3 console, create a bucket and I will call this one as demo Athena 2022 and US East 1 and that should be unique and then we will create this bucket right now the bucket is created i can click on view details here is my bucket and i can just copy the bucket name right here and i am going to just enter s3 colon slash slash and then my bucket name so just click on save and now my query is the location is going to be in this S3 bucket. So now that we have done this, we can refresh this page and we can see that there are already some data sources, the AWS data catalog and some databases we can use. Okay. But what I'm going to do is that I am going to create my own database for it to work because you may not necessarily have this so for this it's pretty easy we are going to create our s3 access log in amazon s3 so as you can see i have made my bucket called demo s3 2022 access logs so what i have to do now is to actually create a database and create this table that will present the data object in here so how to do so? Well, let's go into our code and the first line 
we have under S3 events, Athena S3 access log SQL is to create this database. So we will paste this in and create database and then click on run and this creates a database successfully. So now we have a specific database here called S3 access logs DB. Next we need to create an external table that represents the bucket logs. So let me copy and paste this and the question is how did I get this? Well if you type Athena S3 access log on the internet you will have a link and this link will actually give you the query units you do to create this proper access logs. So the one thing I have to change is under the location we have to change the target bucket name and the prefix. Well it turns out that my properties will have will give me this so I will copy this S3 URL which has the bucket name and the prefix so I will paste this in right here and we are good to go. Now let's run this and now the query is successful so now under this database we see there is a table called my buckets logs with a bunch of columns right so if I click on this and click on preview table now this is going to run a select star from my table limit 10 and at the bottom we see that it runs 10 rows okay and this 10 rows represent my access log so this is super handy now I get all my access log data in this table super handy so this is just catching this surface because using Athena we can run some more interesting type of queries so as you can see right now we have done nothing we did not provision database this is all serverless okay all these queries are run by the Athena service directly on the data that sits within our S3 bucket which is I think extremely powerful so in this query we are going to say we want to get the request URI option operation and the HTTP status count star to count how many from this table and we are going to do a group by so this is a more advanced SQL query but it's gonna give us a log of reports so the status code as well as how many times they occur so we can see for example that a uh, get one and a uh, head and so on so this could help us for example do a report into if visioning what type of queries or what type of requests do not happen or do not succeed on our bucket right and one last for example we saw that there were there were a few 403 errors so it can say hey this is when it's unauthorized this is very fishy either someone is not authorized to do something and cool we want to know who and why or if someone is trying to get unauthorized access to our buckets and then we want to just deep dive into it so again we run this query and then okay and this rows will represent what type of query generated and ended up in 403 which is super handy so again the whole power here of Athena is that we are able to literally query data on Amazon S3 do some complex query directly without setting up any servers without transforming our data just by setting up the data just the setting up the right data format and specifying what the data is Athena is able to help us within all this thing okay so finally in Athena you can see the recent queries as well as saved queries if you wanted to and edit the setting as well if you wanted to encrypt the query result in the target bucket so guys that's it for this lecture i hope you like it and i'll see you in the next lecture if you have any doubt or any question 
feel free to ask in the comment section below i will answer you as soon as i can thank you for watching bye and have a nice day